So we're in uh, Photoshop CC. We're looking at the interface, which is in the Essentials mode. You know, the mode we use for uh, creating graphics that are going to be used on the web or they're going to be used um, maybe in print. But for our purposes, what we want is the motion interface. So you can see with this we have a timeline down here. This is where all your images are going to go side by side, creating a sequence that's going to create some type of a motion. Which would be pretty much like if you had a motion of someone waving an arm, you know, at the beginning of the motion, maybe in uh, 15 sequences, the, the first sequence is the bottom of the arm lowered, and the last sequence is the top of the movement. And in between, we have what is basically called the tweens, uh, coming from old uh, animator cartoon days like uh, Disney, uh, because they actually had artists who created the uh, who created the uh, tween pictures, and they were you know maybe a little a little bit lower on the on the artist ladder. So the first thing we're going to do is create a background. I've already uh, created a document here by saving this which you can see up here, animated GIF. I already saved it as. Right now I'd be saving a new one. It's 300 by 300 pixels. So the reason I'm keeping it small like that is this, my web page is going to be maybe a 960 fixed width that I want it to fit in somewhere there. So I'm not going to create some big, huge thing that's going to give me problems in a couple of different ways. One of them is just going to be the file size. Uh, you know, when you think of maybe how many... Uh, pictures are going to make up your sequence and and also the size of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a background. This is going to be my background, uh, nothing fancy. I could give it another color if I wanted to uh, just by coming over here using the tools or uh, using the paint, paint bucket. But uh, this is going to be my background. So I'm going to make a copy of this by coming down to this, and I'm going to start my animation. So I'm going to start my animation starting point. I'm going to use a ellipse tool, and I see up here my stroke is black too, so you won't even see it. This should turn out to be probably pretty ugly. Uh, so what I'm going to do is pull A small circle and that's my start so now you see I have two frames so what um, Photoshop has is it has a thing called, and you see a little icon down here, and you see it represents, uh, you know, uh, intermediaries, uh, circles. Not that you'd be always using circles, but uh, so what I'm going to do, it, this creates tweens. So I already had this set to seven. I click OK, and I have my tween set up. So I'm on a Mac. If I wanted to have them go the other way, I would just go and maybe do Command Copy or do a keyboard command or do, and I'm using a command on a Mac to just pull it over, uh, a duplicate. Now I just come back here and I go to Tweens again. Same thing, 7. So now I have myself an animation, which I'm going to watch. It'll probably be a little bit choppy. That's not all that bad. So, here's the start of an animation. Uh, now, if I want to add, say, text or whatever, I'm going to add a, another keyframe here. And I'm going to add text. Maybe I don't want, well, I'll keep the circle on there. I'm just going to add the letter A. Go up to the Move tool move it down and 
I don't want it in any of these other frames. So I select them all. I come over here and deselect it. So now we only have it in one frame. So now you can come here and grab your copy keyframe. Click and maybe do that. And again, create some type of between. Uh, seven is going to make it pretty good, but I'll do seven. So now when I look at my animation, starting over here, do the run. <laughs> so it's not all that terrible. You know, you can really get creative with this. You can even go in and draw your individual frames. Uh, create your own individual frames if I wanted to uh, maybe have things distorted or whatever. So now what I would do is come up here and do save for the web. I see it's this GIF. I don't need a lot of colors. And the more colors I have in a GIF, the bigger the file is going to be. And this isn't going to be a big file anyways because you can. there's really not much at all to it. But, you know, you can see that there's one, two, basically two colors or three with the background. But then again, so if you zoomed in on these, uh, if you were to zoom in on these pictures, you see you can see some grays in there too. So it's not just, and that's so it can um, seamlessly kind of, you know, integrate into the next color. So it's not really just three colors. You know, it's more than three colors. But that still, I can I can take this uh, GIF, which is what I want to save it as, and reduce the colors, uh, and be safe. So I could reduce it down to, uh, say, probably 32 easily. You know, with what I have here, and just to save, and have animated GIF GIF. So now what I want to do is I want to, after I've saved this, I want to go and check it out in a browser. So here we are, animated GIF. I'll just pull it right down into Safari and see how it looks. No, it's not all that bad. It looks like maybe I could uh, either adjust the timing. So if you want to adjust the timing, what you'll be doing is just I'm not going to I'm just I'm not going to go and do everything here. You see, you have the timing right here set at zero seconds, and I've selected using Shift. So if I want to change things, maybe to make them smoother or whatever, I can I can customize the flow. I can slow down things, but if I slow it down, is it going to make it too choppy? The other thing is maybe I wanted to make the transition in between the top movement of this and the bottom. Maybe I wanted more than seven frames. Maybe I wanted like 15 frames. So you can experiment a little bit and uh, fine tune it. So hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.